Okay, we'll move on to uh, Marie Puy Barreau. Uh, she's a, a major thought leader on workplace innovation, and she will talk about um, uh, uh, well, the role employees play in making our workplace more sustainable. Where's Marie? Okay, you have a mic, Marie. I have, I okay. have the mic. Yes, it's working, and I need a the click. A clicker. There you are. Good luck. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for hanging around. Um, two more presentations to go, and uh, we can all uh, enjoy the, the last break. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today to share with you the result of a study which uh, I have carried out with uh, the Royal College of Art, with Jeremy Mearson, who's sitting here in the audience, for the last two years. Um, and, and the project has been extremely successful in terms of giving us a fantastic un understanding about uh, sustainability in the world place and how much we really need to pay attention to the value of having a sustainable way of working. And when we started this study two years ago, we were not really sure about where we were going with Jeremy. Uh, we ne really needed to, uh, uh, to build an understanding about the definition of sustainability, uh, also building an understanding about the expectation of end users uh, from a sustainability point of view. So as, as a, a company, as Johnson Controls, I work into the building efficiency uh, group of our business uh, and the, the group called Global Workplace Solution, where we deliver facilities management uh, a solution to our customers around the world. And, uh, and clearly, the question of sustainability is still very high on the agenda. Uh, on the other hand, Jeremy and, and his, uh, uh, his research uh, centre, the Helen Hamlin Centre for Design, concentrate on uh, health and patient safety lab, age and, and ability lab, but work and CT lab. So they were really able, in partnership with us, to come up with some great understanding about where we're going in terms of addressing sustainability in the workplace. So the two-year partnership has now uh, uh, been completed and what I'm going to be presenting to you today is a summary about the key result, uh, including, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the model um, that we have created around sustainability culture. Then I'm going to touch on quickly some survey results about what we've learned from uh, the respondents to our survey. And I'll finish by showing you the engagement toolkit which we have developed as a final product of our, of our study. So let's uh, first look at, at the model. The first stage of the study was very much trying to understand where we are and trying to make sense about what it is about being sustainable in the way we work. We traditionally know the definition of sustainability uh, in terms of tackling energy efficiency, in terms of reducing CO2 consumption. But when you talk to end users, they have different expectations about being sustainable into their working environment. And that was one of the first tasks that uh, 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 Jeremy and his team uh, uh, started to look at. We wanted to understand if there were any differences into the behavior of hand users, if from a government point of view, uh, from a, you know, in country differences, if government was, was pushing different way of tackling sustainability. So all of that formed the initial shape you know, of our study. But more, more than anything else, what we, we really wanted to come up with was a very simple model and methodology to enable you as hand users to understand where you are in terms of being green into the way you work, into being sustainable. Now, 94% of respondents out there from a study are telling us that they want their employer to go beyond environmental compliance. 94% out of 10,000 respondents, by the way. Um, and many organizations have different ways of looking at how to address sustainability. Um, so our study started by really shaping out, defining sustainability, understanding what are the different uh, type of cultures. We've identified four different cultures, which uh, I, I will describe very briefly afterwards. Campaigners, housekeeper, pragmatist, and libertarian. And all depends on your involvement as an individual and also the involvement of your company. Um, so everybody is of course very different into the way they uh, understand sustainability and participate to being sustainable into the way they work. But each of us have, have really something in common. We want our employers and ourselves to engage into being more sustainable you know, at work. So that's, that statistics is, is, uh, was really the starting point of the whole study. 
Um, years ago, I carried out that very large scale survey called Oxygens, where I asked uh, the generation Y and other generation to tell me about uh, how green they wanted their employer to be. And the statistics out of the 10,000 respondents were this one, 94% are expecting their employer to go beyond environmental compliance, 94%. So we really need to tackle uh, sustainability in the workplace very differently. The model which um, um, we have uh, developed, uh, as I say, is divided into four different types of culture, and you will see that you probably don't fit into one single box, but into several uh, of them. Um, and um, I'll describe very quickly what they are. So, first of all, being a pragmatist, the pragmatist culture is about uh, the, the solution uh, uh, has to work for everyone. So, uh, the investment from the company side is low and the investment from the employee side would also be low. So, those type of, uh, of uh, uh, pragmatists would be looking for desk sharing policies, for recycling all IT equipment, very simple and straightforward solution. On the other hand, the libertarian um, would have, on, uh, as an employee, quite a low uh, 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 you know, involvement or low cost uh, to himself, but would want to have the company to invest much more into the, the solution around sustainability. So for them, free will prevail. A libertarian culture uh, will be looking at waste reduction target and, and really talk about it, highly publicized. Company investment also in renewable energy products. So he wants the employer to really demonstrate the high level of engagement on sustainability. The housekeeper, on the other hand, which is completely on the other side of the graph, uh, although they, you know, the cost to the company is very low, they themselves really want to invest a lot of time and effort into making the way they work sustainable. For them, waste not, want not. Uh, they see themselves as really engaging, you know, into car sharing, into recycling. They're active, sustainable uh, uh, people into their working environment. The last one, the campaigner, is probably, I would say, the culture where it's more um, Those companies uh, would uh, invest a lot of cost into uh, making sustainability work into the organization, and they actually also expect their employees themselves to invest a lot of time. Um, so for them, um, we all need to take urgent action. And although a lot of uh, organization would like to see themselves into this box, doesn't mean that they are uh, embracing that campaigning culture. What we found, and when you complete our survey, which is online, is that you find you little, usually a little bit of everything. You rarely 100% of campaigner. You would have a predominant culture, but you need of the other culture to make your, your strategy success, successful as being a sustainable organization. So, um, the model was, was great and it was a great starting point, but we needed the hand users, you, to be able to find who you are uh, and identify who you are. So the second year was much more concentrated on putting together a survey online, so very quickly, in five minutes, you can actually find out what is your culture, what is the most predominant culture, and understand who you are. Um, the diagnostic tool which uh, uh, we've uh, developed on top of the survey um, uh, was also there to help us then to analyze uh, the result. So the study is available online on our website, uh, globalworkplaceinnovation.com, if you want to complete it. It takes five minutes, so it's very easy. Um, it takes you through a series of very simple and basic questions about your behavior into your working environment. And through a series of uh, quick questions, it takes you to uh, uh, having an understanding about your culture of sustainability in the workplace. So the question touched on transport, your behavior, the way you actually engage into sustainability. And from that, you'll obtain a, a summary of your result. You can benchmark yourself against, uh, against the, the, the global sample, and you can start to understand who you are and how the pool of respondents from your own company 
uh, are also getting engaged into sustainability. The diagnostic tool is a great tool for us to make sense out of a large pool of respondents from the same organization about uh, uh, your sustainability culture. So, so far, from the respondent which we've got, and we only at uh, 750 respondents at the moment, uh, the majority see themselves uh, as campaigners. I mean, 42.3% campaigners, 25.5% housekeepers, 20% libertarian, and 12% pragmatists. So you see, the tendency is towards having a campaigner's approach towards sustainability. But the results are much more interesting than that. Um, 46% are actually always looking for ways to be more sustainable across our sample. So the level of engagement of employees uh, into being sustainable is really high uh, uh, compared to, uh, to the rest. 83% actually uh, um, believe uh, that sustainability should be embedded in the business. Okay, and sustainability, and from you know the study, the strategic uh, uh, discussion which we had with uh, with the organisation who participated to this study, we found out that the level of engagement has to come from both employees and company, but that it has to be embedded within the culture of the organisation itself. You on your own being a good housekeeper and sorting out the recycling bin every day is not going to solve the problem. So hence why we need to have that mix of culture. The other thing that 53% actually are considering the environmental record of an organization when applying for a job. Now for employers, if that percentage uh, increase with the level of respondents which we have to our survey, and again it's early stage, uh, should be a, a real concern. It should really be uh, um, one of the major focus of employers. If your employees are starting to uh, uh, you know, put their nose into how good you are environmentally, and I'm not speaking about just being BRIAM compliant or LEED compliant, about your level of engagement into society uh, uh, to be more sustainable, um, we uh, really need to pay attention uh, to that. The final uh, uh, statistics is around um, who should take the lead. Now, 83% agree to strongly agree that they should take the lead, that employees themselves should highly be engaged. And you will see this is something which has been really reflected into the way we design our engagement toolkit uh, toward the end of, uh, of this study. So, actively engaging uh, employees. Um, it, it was our main focus for the final part of this study. And the engagement toolkit uh, came together probably toward the end of September, if I remember well, so it's still fresh uh, in our mind. Um, and we've only presented it uh, um, a couple of times uh, you know, so far. But what we're trying to put together is a very simple step-by-step -step approach to make you address sustainability into your, uh, your workplace. Um, let's look at the last uh, uh, video on uh, the engagement toolkit and what it looks like. Um, it's designed as an electronic document, it's divided into uh, five different stages, starting by understanding you know, who is your organization, who are you, as a company and as an employee, uh, and then evaluate you know, your level of engagement. So the survey would be part of this, um, understanding also um, the level of engagement that your employees are uh, uh, able to commit to and make sense out of that. We try to keep it again as simple as possible. The second one is very much on creating a roadmap and understanding, okay, where do you, what are the different steps? What are your priorities? What are your opportunities uh, into putting together a strategy? So the roadmap, again, uh, uh, is a, uh, very well you know, structured into the engagement toolkit. Understanding how you're going to be deploying and creating a, a communication strategy around it, dividing again into four stages, like motivating your employees, tailoring your approach, communicating uh, uh, to your employees. Uh, there's a great series of uh, examples also, which we collected from the company we, we spoke to. Oh. Stupid, I, I pressed the button. <laughs> Can you start the video again? Do I just, 
One side by engaging actively employees into the process and engaging also managers into helping to build uh, that process. So once the survey is, is completed, of course you have a first uh, overview about where you are and who you are. And then you can start uh, moving forward to uh, the third step, which is around uh, building your, uh, your communication uh, strategy, which is where we stopped earlier. Um, and again, for each of those stages, uh, you have access to a real example and case studies from our partners. Uh, so motivating employees, tailoring your initiative are really at the core of, uh, of the strategy. And already a lot of you would have, uh, would have done something on sustainability, yeah? on, on that aspect. The final uh, uh, stage is very much about uh, uh, launching and re-evaluating, you know, and feedback, uh, 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 collecting feedback, you know, from your, uh, your employees uh, through the engagement process. Uh, again, very visual output as much as possible. We found out that companies needed to really engage their employees uh, into the process rather than just launching a strategy and let it happen. I think uh, the fact that we need a long-term strategy is extremely important. So giving us feedback also is often uh, something which is uh, neglected and yet employees are really asking for it. So the electronic uh, 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 tool is very simple and straightforward to use. Um, we um, uh, put a focus on making sure the strategy was uh, uh, easy to use, uh, very well structured, um, where um, we uh, provide very simple solution to collect information from a large number of individuals into uh, uh, the working environment. Uh, there's a whole series also of workshops and initiatives which you can launch in order to build the strategy, in order to uh, uh, find you know, the right solution which is adapted to your, uh, to your business. And uh, from a communication point of view, a, a very simple example, very often we're trying to overcomplicate the way we communicate to employees and um, uh, we found out from our study that actually the most simple solution uh, uh, works uh, uh, the best. So visualizing, engaging and giving feedback, not hesitating to actually uh, um, um, uh, tell uh, about the success you know, of uh, the strategy uh, to their employees is extremely important. Okay. Um, since I only have 20 minutes, uh, you know, I've rushed through uh, the three sections on uh, um, presenting you the model, giving you some uh, quick results on uh, uh, the, the survey so far and presenting you the engagement toolkit. I invite you to uh, come forward and uh, speak to me afterwards about uh, getting more information and I'm happy to take questions if you have any questions now. I think we probably have a couple of minutes, two minutes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, quick, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Linda van der Sand. Um, you asked the question how, um, how people perceived sustainability. Um, did you define sustainability when you asked that question or did you use a list of examples of behaviours that people could engage in? Um, uh, actually both. Uh, we spent the first part of our study to defining what sustainability meant from an end user point of view. Uh, and that uh, really drove us towards not one single definition, but identifying those different cultures. I think more than a definition, it's about culture when you talk about sustainability. Hence why we formulated that model, which was all the interpretation of our, of our investigation around definition, de defining sustainability. Okay? Uh, so that's why, and, uh, yeah, as such, I haven't given a single definition of sustainability. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I was just wondering because if you ask that question, uh, someone will say, "Oh, you know, it's very important to me," mm. um, and and ninety four percent percent of people seem to find it important, um, but some people just um, believe that sustainability <coughs> is more than <coughs> just um, recycling, um, uh, than and, and, and others will 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 go. Yes. Yes, and, and actually that's why I've done that project. Mm. Because when I saw that statistics of 94%, uh, 
uh, to be very honest, I was very skeptic. I was like, how come 94% want their employer to go beyond environmental compliance? Uh, so I tasked uh, uh, Jeremy to actually find out. And that's uh, it's by digging into uh, the study that we came up uh, about, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, issues around cultures rather than just sustainability. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, Marie. Thank you.